Hey everybody, it's Triple J. Welcome to a brand new tutorial video for RimWorld called The First Three Days. We are in version 1.2, the latest stable release of RimWorld. And I'm going to take you through the first three days of a playthrough. Completely unmodded, I'm going to take you from the main menu screen, get you set up in a game, and talk about some of the things you're going to experience in the first three days. Just go over anything that sort of pops into my head. Kind of touching on some of the things that I talked about in the tutorial series videos that I made. I'm going to link those down, that playlist down in the description if you have not seen those. But just sort of do a quick overview of some of those things. And hopefully, after this video, you can kind of get rolling in a playthrough that you are engaging in for your first time. So let's just dive right in. We're going to do New Colony. I'm going to do the basic crash landed scenario. We're then going to pick Cassandra as our storyteller. And we're going to go with the Strive to Survive difficulty. I'm going to pick Reload Anytime. The only reason I'm going to pick Reload Anytime is maybe I want to pick the save up at a different point And I want to be able to save it uh, just for the tutorial purposes. Generally speaking, I would go with Commitment Mode if I was doing this um, as just a playthrough for myself. Next. I will do 50% globe coverage. I will do, I will title the seed the first three days. And that way you can always find this seed if you'd like. All you have to do is type in it just like I have written it there and keep everything sort of the same and it will generate the exact same planet. So if you wanted to play along, you could literally find the exact same seed that we're gonna be on. I'm gonna keep the rest of this all right at normal and I'll hit generate. Okay, now that we're in the map, view the world view let's just find a temperate spot something fairly balanced to do our landing let's take a look here temperate forest the terrain granite limestone and slate gives us some large hills for a little bit of defenses also stuff to mine out 40 out of 60 days for a growing period is really really nice especially when starting out because then it just gives you a little bit of leeway in case you maybe don't grow enough food or maybe you don't get growing started fast enough. Gives you more period of time throughout the year to make sure you get that uh, working. Also gives you a lot of opportunity for animals to hunt. So we will pick that. We're going to go next. Now we're going to pick our characters. In our previous videos of getting started, uh, I have showed you sort of all of the different traits and what they all mean. And kind of how to get all this going so i'm just going to randomize a few people fast walker beautiful and tough interesting very little pain from this left leg scar they're not great at fighting but these are really really wonderful traits they have good social skill they can cook really well and they have some planting skills i think that might be a person that we take so i'm going to go down here to gracie yeah see starting out I'm not going to want someone with an alcohol addiction. That's just going to cause problems. Also, Wimp isn't great. Great memory. Slow learner. That's not great. And yeah, they have a bad back. So we're going to not do this person. Unfortunately, they have a lot of good passions for things. Psychically dull, trigger happy, and nervous. They can't do dumb labor. So one of the rules that I kind of like to live by i guess in terms of picking colonists so if someone can't do dumb labor there's a couple things i want to make sure that they're going to be good at one of them is intellectual they are not good at intellectual if, but if they had a high passion they could just be your constant researcher and then you don't even have to worry about them you know having to haul and clean they're not going to do any of it the other thing is crafting so that's a possibility also they're a good miner so if i can get them crafting and mining that could actually work out pretty well. Although nervous isn't a great trait, I think that I'm gonna take this person because mining is gonna be super crucial, especially when trying to get resources quickly uh, early game. So I think I might go with this person for now. And then we have Genevieve. What do we want? Now, generally speaking, and I've talked about this before, is you kind of want people, you wanna sort of balance out your team skill. So you can see those down here. So right now we're sort of missing someone who's got a good construction skill. It's decent. We also don't have someone who's great at fighting. So in this case, I'm not going to take out nonviolent. We also might want someone who's good at medical or intellectual. So when you're randomizing, Night Owl, Ascetic. 
Mm, yeah, we don't need more social skills. Psychically dull, super immune, great memory. Those are amazing, amazing traits. They have a passion for intellectual, incapable of none. We're going to take this guy, DeLeon. We're going to take Nag. We're going to take Lou. And we're going to take DeLeon, who is a great melee. Now, one of the things is not incredible medical skill, but they can all do it. And two of them are at least somewhat decent. But Super Immune is really, really great. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to take these three and start off. Because we're going to get more colonists as we as we carry forward. So let's do it. And here we are. The three of you awake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. Here we are, the 6th of April, May. 5,500. Okay, so this is our setup. Here's where we are going to live until we can escape the planet. Now, something that is nice to... You generally want to start your base sort of in the center of the map. I think right here might be a great place. We have some area to farm right here, but also gives us a little bit of protection and cover. So we can easily probably wall ourselves in just as a starting point. I think it's very good right away to get walled in. Because what that does is that allows you to... If you can have your resources and maybe a little bit of farming inside of a very basic wall that will allow you to be a little bit more self-sufficient if there was an animal event a wild animal or just it kind of just kind of protects you from the environment so let's do the first thing and make sure that we allow everything so i'm going to click the allow button and i'm going to swipe it over all that stuff there's also gonna be the little bits of steel that are over the map and right there as well and all that great awesome okay next thing that i like to do is align my people in order of their shooting skill i like to align them from left to right in terms of best shooting skill to worst shooting skill and then worst melee to best melee so essentially the mediocre people are in the middle of the line that helps me know who are my best shooters and potentially even my hunter is my far left person. I don't think anybody's really good at shooting. Yeah, so DeLeon is definitely going to be our melee. So you're going to equip the Plasteel Knife. You have no shooting skills, so I'm going to give you the Revolver. And Nag, you have a little bit, so I'll give you the Bolt Action. So Nag is going to be on the far left. And if you want to shift the positions of your colonists, if you hold right-click over them and then drag. And that's all there is to that. Next thing that I like to do is make sure that they have their armor now nag is our furthest away person so you might are going to be generally shooting from a distance so i'm going to give you the helmet lou you're sort of our mid-range person i'm going to give you the pants and then DeLeon, you get the vest to protect your little chest from getting stabbed because you're going to be in the most close of combat now generally speaking i don't know if it really matters between the pants and the vest uh it's just it's all protection in general but definitely helpful to get that equipped as soon as possible we have a little bit of the medicine and the components and then of course the package survival meals so first thing we're going to want to do i will set up a stockpile right in here and this is going to not allow rotten, but it will allow animal corpses for hunting. This is going to be a temporary setup until I get power going and we can start getting coolers going so we can start to have a freezer. But when you start out, you just want to make sure that you're safe. Let's see. I think I'm going to wall up here down to here. So let me get this growing zone set up. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. you know what i'm gonna go and take the planning tool real fast and i'm gonna set up a wall now you don't want to go too big right away because there's only so much they can do that's a lot of building so we're gonna set it up roughly about there plan it out 
And then I'm going to do my growing zones. I'm going to set the growing zones up. We're going to do a big thing of potatoes right there. I don't think I have the ability to make heal root yet. I don't. So it's going to tell me that heal root requires eight skill in growing to sow. None of my growers have this skill. That's fine. I'm going to put it there just for the future purposes. And then I'm going to make another little growing zone. And I'm going to make that out of cotton. In case we need to make some clothing. And also it's beneficial later on in the game as well. So they're going to start to haul things in. While they're doing that, I'm going to set up their priorities. So I'm going to click to manual priorities because that... I feel like if you're going to have success in RimWorld... It's going to be your best bet to learn and understand the manual priority system. So let's take a look at what we have and what we don't have. So DeLeon is our best medic, He's our best doctor. So we're going to allow you to do doctoring. And you know what? You're a four too, but we're going to need you to get it better. So I'm going to have you both at a one, which means I'm going to have patient at two. So I want you to help the others before yourself. Nag, you're terrible at this, but I'm going to make sure that you have a four. Okay, and the only reason is I don't want Nag to necessarily be our top medic. But I do want Nag to have the ability to do it in case the other two go down. Just, I mean, zero, at least they can do it. But it's not going to be very good, but at least they can stop the bleeding, etc. Firefight, yes, all at a one. I will have bed rest at a two, basic at a two... We have two really good wardens, but I'm only going to have one of them do it right now. And I think that's going to be Nag. Not because Nag is better, but because Lou has more things to do. So you will warden. Uh, I will not have... Let's see, I'm going to put handling at a low. Actually, you know what? You have a passion for it. You know, I don't know. I don't think... I think you're instead you're gonna be our cook nag you're not gonna cook right now but you will be our hunter because you're the one with the gun you're the one with the bolt action rifle i will have nag mine and you will craft smith and tailor uh, we're not getting smithing and tailoring probably right away but definitely crafting to make stone blocks for our walls and things your research is pretty trash I guess if you have nothing else to do, if you're not wardening, let's even put handling at a three, okay? So that means that Nag will warden, mine, smith, tailor, craft, then handle, then do research. And that is really what you're looking for. That's where the priority system comes in. So then, Lou, you will be our majority cook. I'm actually going to put that at one for you because it's a really high priority early on. Make sure that we're not starving and all that stuff. You will also construct. Not ideal. I'm going to tell you right now. Not ideal to have your main cook also be your constructor. Not great. Uh, but that's kind of what the situation we're in. I may have Nag do cooking at a two just to maybe so they can both make meals just not ideal because you want you need a lot of construction done very early so yeah also not oh man yeah lou is kind of doing everything so uh construct grow yes i may have nag also do a bit of growing the, the reality is is that there's so many things to be doing early on like there's just a lot of things you need a lot of stuff grown you need a lot of things right away so your priority list for only three colonists is going to be pretty heavy. There's good. There's they just have a lot of stuff to do. And that's just the reality of it. I'm not going to do any art right now. And then I'm going to have you clean. I don't know if you're going to get to that, but and then DeLeon, you're also going to handle it a three because you have more things to do. You're going to mine. So actually, I'm going to turn Nag down on mining because essentially DeLeon, that's really all that he has to do. In reality, you could cook too. I mean, you have a four skill. Now, of course, we run the risk of food poisoning at such a low skill level, but that's, you know, a bit of the roll of the dice there. Then you're going to research, but I want you to clean first because I'm going to get a research bench up really early. 
Actually, haul clean and then research. Cool. Okay. Let's get them going. First things first is we're going to want to make a structure. And I don't have a stone cutter's table yet, so I really can't make this out of stone block unless I went around the map and deconstructed... Oh, I don't even see... That's steel. I don't even really see any structures made of... I guess there's a little bit there. That's a little time-consuming. And I think just to get started, it's perfectly fine to have wood, but you're going to want to replace that with... You're going to want to replace that with stone as soon as possible. So, for this, it's going to be our, our outside wall for now. This will probably end up being an interior wall at some point. But what I'm going to do is put a door there, a door there, and then a door there as well. And the reason I kind of like to do them on the corners like this, just having open doors, being able to fire outside of doors, and then hiding back inside the doors can really, really save uh, your life sometimes. So it's good good practice to have more doors to just get an, a better angle on an enemy early on. I think we're going to also need to go and chop some more trees down. How many people do I have on plant cutting? It's just Lou. Oh boy. Another thing we're gonna want to do pretty quick. Yeah, having one constructor can be bad. So it might be worth getting DeLeon to start doing some construction. He's terrible at it. He's only a two. However, there's so much construction done early on and really not any construction that is that detrimental if they fail. You can see that he's botching some of these walls up here. Not the biggest deal, right? We can always just get more wood, but he's getting so much experience doing this that he's going to level up pretty quickly, even if he doesn't have a passion for it, just because there's so many things to construct. So what I'm going to do here is make some beds, and I'm going to use this area. I'm going to put three beds in here, and then I'm going to make a separate room with a door because we're going to want to give them at least a little bit of a barracks where they can you know sleep have a separate room to sleep eventually i'm going to want to get them their own rooms but this offers us a little bit of space there the other thing we're going to want to get up pretty quickly is a butcher table and i'm going to put that for now outside because the one thing that you need to think about when considering a butcher table is the fact that when they're cutting up all the animals, there's blood and there's nasty stuff getting spit around everywhere. And so it can really, really be a dirty area. So you want to kind of keep your butcher table and where you cook the actual food in a separate space. Because that will help with the cleanliness of the room, which will affect the food poisoning chance. And then I think I'm going to also make... See, now they're just kind of sleeping outside. That's okay. For the first night, I'm not too concerned about it because inside of their needs, they will have extremely low expectations, which gives them a 30 boost. Now, they'll hold on to that for a while. That kind of gives you a little bit of play so that they're not just mentally breaking immediately, uh, which is really, really helpful because as you can see, like, they're sleeping on the ground, slept in the cold, they're uncomfortable, they ate without a table, you know, it's not very clean, blah, blah, blah. But they also realize early on that they need to survive. So you get that little bit of a boost for a while, which is really, really nice. I think what I'm going to do over here is create... Hmm, I want to create some sort of a small kitchen area... And I think I'm going to shrink this back a bit. And I'm going to make a little bit of a kitchen area inside of here. Right next to the stockpile. For now, I'm going to put a fueled stove instead of an electric. Just to get started. That it says it's going to be outdoors. However, we can build a roof over it. Make sure it's all roofed up. Now, they'll do this probably automatically once the wall is built. And then I'm going to put a door on it. And I'm going to get a table. See all the things that are being built? I mean, there's just so many things that need building right away. I'm going to put a table in there and a couple stools so they can sit. 
and eat a meal instead of standing because that will help with that minus three debuff. They'll eventually build their bedrooms. But yeah, tons of wood is needed. And thankfully, we're on a map where wood is fairly plentiful. So we'll make sure that they can chop all these trees down. So they're going to finish growing, which is really, really good. You want to get that done. Like in the first day or two, you definitely want to have growing at least getting started. Because the, the sooner you have crops growing, you only have so many package survival meals. We're down to 34. Always keep your eye on that. And that's something helpful you can see up here in the top left corner. You can open this up and always at a glance see how much food you have available. Which is really, really good. Because you got to keep an eye on that. Because all of a sudden, what you don't want to see on the right hand side here is starvation. And then you click on it and it says all three of your colonists are starving. And then you check your, your stockpile where your food is. And, you know, there's nothing there. And then all of a sudden you have to scramble to either grab some berries or do some really quick hunting. And then people are in bad moods. It's just not good. So you want to make sure that food is always being checked on. Now, one thing to consider as well. As you can see, these are deteriorating because they are unroofed and outdoors. So you want to make sure that your stockpiles are inside. I'm going to expand that to there. I'm going to put a door on that so then this can be walled in and none of this stuff will start to deteriorate anymore. Now, steel doesn't deteriorate. Uranium doesn't deteriorate. Wood will uh, is if it's outside, but like stone blocks will not. So what I like to do as well is create a stockpile that maybe sits outside. We can just do a little one for now. I'm going to clear all. I'll prefer this to be important. And I'm going to make sure that stone blocks, steel, uranium, we're not going to be getting uranium right now, but like plasteel, jade can sit outside, silver can sit outside, and those can sit in this. So then we can save a little bit of room in our tiny little stockpile here. Now, without power, we could get power. I could put down a generator. I could put down a generator and I could sneak that right in there. Yeah, maybe we do that. So the options for power right away are a wood fire generator, chem fuel generator, or a wind turbine. Now the wind turbines are nice because they offer a decent amount of power. The problem with wind turbines is they need to have, they're big and all of those white, all that space inside of those white squares needs to be free of trees or walls or roof. So it just, it kind of, it's just, they're just big. It's just really, really big. And it only powers it if there's wind. So when I start out, if I have wood, if I live in a, an area where there's forest and enough trees to cut down and to be pl fairly plentiful, I generally start out with the wood fire generator because that is going to give you enough. As long as it gets refueled, it's going to give you enough power. So I'm going to cancel this fueled stove. See, I'm already pivoting. But that's kind of part of the game is you, you, you figure out, you, you plan for something, you pivot when you start to realize what you might be able to get in the future. I'm going to get a, an electric stove down right there. They're going to finish building that wall. But yeah, we'll get this generator up. 100 steel and two components. We should have that. No problem. And that will be just enough for us to make sure that we have a couple lights because they don't like sitting in darkness that's one of their that's one of their pet peeves it just happens that it really snuck in there nicely but yeah i i rarely use wind turbines anymore i feel like i used to early on and then as i've sort of progressed through my time in rimworld i've really started to use them less and less generally i have like maybe two maybe three of them before i can get to geothermal power it's just, it's the, it's the next, it's the best thing for consistent, large amounts of power. This, again, this is how I would start a playthrough. Like, literally, I am not doing many things at all different than I would, how I would start a playthrough anytime. And sometimes it's just beneficial to see. So we're going to, we're just going to keep moving through. We have about one day left before we're in the three days. And so far, we're doing okay. Everyone's got a bed. We're in a room. Where everyone has decent beds. I mean, they're they're poor beds. They're not great, but we can rebuild those later when we have a better constructor. Now, one thing we might want to do with the schedule 
is perhaps get someone on a night shift. If they're not a night owl, you can put them on a night shift and it won't matter. They will sort of essentially sleep whenever you tell them to. So what I might do is put... Generally, I like to put a cook. If I have two cooks, I put them one on a day shift and one on a night shift. So then at least we're cooking and having enough food all, all day. So I think I'm going to put nag... I'm going to put Nag on a night shift. So I'm going to go to schedule. I'm going to grab Nag. Whoops. Schedule. We're going to go to Nag. I'm going to add sleep from 11 to 4. So the game by default gives them 8 hours of sleep and nothing else. I like to put in recreation time and I like to do it for 2 hours before bedtime. So I will change all of these to recreation time. Except, except that. And then also make that nothing because that's a night shift. But I find six hours to be generally enough sleep for them. And then two hours of recreation is mostly okay. If you have someone who's maybe a little bit more irritable, you can always give them another hour of recreation. It's not the biggest, not the biggest deal. But that's kind of how I like to do it. And I've done it this way for years. Uh, is it the best way? I don't know. But it's the way that I do it. So that's how I'm going to do it. And I'll set up so that we have two different shifts. And then we have someone always, always cooking. Okay, so now the generator is up, but now it's telling us that we need to fuel it with wood. And that comes from the hauling job. So someone who's doing hauling will refuel that generator. So I don't think I actually have someone who's doing that as a priority. So I'm going to tell them to fuel it. You just got to keep your eye on that. So he's going to fuel it with 75 wood and it's going to last us three and a half days. So not too bad for the amount of wood that you put in it and you get a thousand watts of power out of it. So now we've got light. We have a stove. So real quick, I'm going to set up cooking a simple meal and we're going to do until we have, let's say, 20. I don't want to do a whole lot of simple meals. And I'm going to unpause the simple meals at... Five. Let's make sure we always have five simple. Actually, no, I'm going to make it 10. Make sure I always have 10. Now, the one thing is I don't want them cooking, you know, 50 or 100 meals just to have them back, you know, like stockpiled because you have to keep in mind that we don't have a cooler just yet. But now that we have this generator, we could get a cooler up and I could actually make this a cooled area if we wanted. The butch table is also up so i'm gonna add bill butcher creature do forever and that's just to start out we're gonna have them butcher anything that we hunt right off the bat lou's gonna finish that uh, botch the construction <laughs> and there we go we are now inside protected we have a proper kitchen we have a barracks where they can sleep and now we have a stockpile. Are you going to try to wall this and roof this entire thing? Oh, let's not do that. <laughs> let's not let's not roof over our garden areas, please. I would appreciate that. Yeah, let's not do that. You can roof over the butcher table. That's fine. Let's not do those bits, please. But now we have some light in here, which is great. I could actually put a light outside. Might be beneficial to actually put a lamp there next to the butcher table if they're doing something at night. They just don't like being in darkness and they work slower. Everything is everything goes slower when it's dark out. Stone cutter's table is the next move. I think for now. I'm just gonna put that like right over here. It's gonna have a slower work speed being outside, but it's not that intense of a job that's gonna slow them down that much. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is just for comfort, I'm going to put a stool right there. And I'm also going to put a stool right in front of that. And I think that as well. Just to give them a little more comfort when they are doing it. So, Stonecutter's table is up. Now, what do we have available for stone? But if you're going to make exterior walls, you're going to want to make it out of granite or limestone first. Slate is one of the weaker stones. Also, marble is one of the weaker stones. Uh, so is, sandstone isn't as great either. So limestone and granite are definitely your strongest bets. But if you have granite, 
definitely do the granite. So what you can see is they're going to take these chunks and they're going to turn them into bricks. So what I like to do is kind of double click on these and then you can kind of get a feel of where do you have granite chunks. So there's a bunch out here. So not too far away. So what I'm going to do is set up a bill and I'm going to say make granite blocks do until you have let's say 500. Let's make 500 blocks and then unpause at 150. So anyone with the crafting skill, there goes Nag making blocks for us as well. Construction botch, that's okay. Again, not the biggest deal in the world if they can't make a stool right off the bat. Now it says we can have visitors. That's actually our first our first notification. So a group from the Wit Het Hiba Accord are visiting the colony. Great. So it does not say that they have anything to trade. So essentially these people are sort of coming, but they there's nothing really you can do with them. I could I could slaughter both of them if I wanted to. Uh, and take all their stuff, but then I would irritate the faction that they're from. So the Wit Heba, that's not what I wanted to do. The Wit Heba Accord is our neutral faction, and they are a civil outlander union. You want to keep these people as allies early on, or at least neutral, so they will still come and trade with you, because if they become hostile, they will not come and trade with you, and they will send attackers instead. It's always good to make sure that you have... At least one or two people that you can do trade with. So, because trading uh, can often give you some stuff that you simply can't make yourself. And uh, can be very, very helpful. Now, these are not traders. They're just a couple visitors, so they'll come and hang out a little bit. Maybe do some chats with your people. But in reality, it's not a huge event. Leon is going to do some stargazing. Nag is making us a bunch of blocks. Which is awesome, because then we can start to turn these outside walls into block which then will prevent well one it's stronger but two it will prevent uh in a raider to set fire to the outside of your walls but see here's the nice thing is now that we have nag on a separate sleep schedule nag can be making us a bunch of blocks so when our constructors wake up they can then build walls with it or vice versa right you can make a bunch of meals while you while, you know, while they're sleeping. So when they get up, then we can eat and kind of carry on our way and, you know, get working again. Nag's going to do a bunch of that. And we're pretty much hitting our third day right now. And we've gotten a lot of things set up. We are growing some food. We can always do a little bit of hunting. You know, we can go out and do some hunting, but we still have a decent amount of package survival meals left. How far grown are these? 21%. We may want to push out at some point to maybe do a little bit more growing. Things like that. But this is, generally speaking, a pretty decent start to a base. This will set you up for some success moving forward. Now, there's tons and tons and tons of other things to be done, to work toward. Hold up. Pause. One thing that I actually forgot to put was the horseshoe pin for recreation. Don't make the mistake that I just did. Other than that, it's a solid start, but definitely, definitely put the horseshoe pin in for recreation because they're going to get bored at some point and they're going to want the horseshoe pin. Okay, proceed. But that's all part of the journey. and That's part of the fun. But I, I do plan to do more tutorial videos in the future, maybe talking about some very specific types of mechanics it's a crazy, crazy wild game filled with just very nutty things that happen. And there's so many variables to how you choose to play it. It's really incredible. And so I'm, I just, I urge all of you to, to go out and enjoy the game and learn it and play at your own pace and start to discover some of the awesome things that RimWorld has to offer. But this is how I would start. This is how I would generally do my first three days of any playthrough that I would be doing. So with that, everyone, that is going to do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope it helps you in a little bit of a way to get going on your RimWorld journey. And I look forward to seeing you either in the next Let's Play series, over on Twitch where we stream RimWorld every other week, or in another video series moving forward. Thank you all again. I really do appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.